Uh, I reckon it's probably about time. We, I said I need to do this, so I probably should. It's quest time. We have the Fontaine quest at the moment. So what we have to do today is complete the Fontaine quest so that we can go to Natlan. And as you can see at the bottom, we do have a timer because I want to add a little bit more of a challenge to this instead of just, you know, spamming through quests. I'm going to be finishing the quest in a time limit. And if I don't finish all of the quests in that time limit, then I pull. I will not obviously be pulling right now. I'll be pulling for Raiden when she comes out, but we will be pulling until we get Raiden. I have five pulls. Hold up. Wait, let me do these. I think I'm close to five star pity, which is why I didn't use these five pulls already. Yep, indeed I am. Let's see if we get something useful. I already have it, but I mean, I guess it could be kind of useful, maybe. No, it is new. Ooh, okay. That'll go on someone. But now with that, I know, bit of luck out of the way. I'm pretty sure we're at pity, but anyway, doesn't matter. But the time limit I'm going to give myself is about, I'm going to say eight hours. That sort of sounds about right for the whole Fontaine quest. So without further ado, let's get this timer rolling. There we go. And let's get into quests. And I'm going to say this again. I said it's the start of every single quest video. But skip cutscene button, please. Pretty please. It would be very, very nice. I could get this over and done within not very long whatsoever. Goodbye, Sumeru. It's time to go do my favorite quest. The Fontaine quest is easily my favorite story quest so far. Natlan came close. And it has potential to be better than Fontaine. It just needed a little bit more. And I reckon that'll probably come in the next couple updates. But for the time being, Fontaine is definitely my favorite quest. I forget that that's what the magic pockets look like. I like they're an actual sort of like bag looking thing. Every time Lenny mentions it, my brain always thinks they're like a little wallet or something. A little, little pouch. This is one thing I don't really like about the, fir the first bit of Fontaine's Archon Quest, and I didn't like it when we I first started playing it. We spend way too much time at this harbor, like this little area here. We spend the first like 20 or probably more minutes. I think mean, we've been going for about 15 minutes. We spend way too much time at this harbor. It's like, I just want to get going, go further into Fontaine, but no, we just have so much stuff happening here. Now, I was thinking I should probably also do this one, which is the Wanderer's quest thingy, I'm pretty sure. That's where Scaramouche becomes Wanderer. But as you can see, we need to complete other quests to continue. And that other quest we need to complete is Kazuha's quest. And I don't feel like doing story quests right now. I'll probably do that at some point, but at the moment, I don't want to deal with it. Please don't say we get forced into child. Hmm. Interesting. Can I not do this? What happens if we, uh... What happens if we die? Because child here... He's not a support. Did that do things? No, that did not do things. Okay, so we can't just die. Which I think then means that we're gonna have to break the rules of the account. Normally, you can sort of get around it if it's, you know, a puzzle or something that requires you to use a certain element, but when they force you into a character during a quest, most of the time, you can't really get out of it. Yeah, so I don't think we can cheat our way out of this. There's no way to get out of the boundaries, and we can't progress the quest unless we kill these guys, which we can't do with anyone else except child. So uh, hopefully this is the only time we have to break the rugs of the account. I feel like the traveler is being a little bit dramatic there with that bit where she just kind of left Lenny and didn't want to talk to him just because he was part of the Fatui. I mean, like, we're quote unquote friends with child who is a literal harbinger. I feel like it was a little bit dramatic, you know, a little bit over the top. And there we go. Act one is completed in Basically an hour and a half, hour 20. On to the next one. This is now diving more into that serial disappearance case and that stuff, I think. This is one of the reasons why I don't mind doing these quests again, like on different accounts. I get to sort of have a refresher of the story, which is nice because I sort of, I remember most of it, but I don't remember it all in depth completely. It's nice to have a little bit of a refresher. Like I completely forgot this bit was in the story, to be honest. 
And there is Act 2 completed. Sitting at 2 hours 20, so that took us basically bang on an hour. It is time to go to the Fortress of Meripede. I think, unless there's something else in between this, but I'm 90% sure it's now time to go to the Fortress of Meripede. No, don't make me do unfinished comedy. Unfinished comedy sucks. Forced experience mode? Isn't that a thing that exists? Why can't we do that? Uh, I don't want to do this. And we're probably going to have to do the whole thing because it's weird. it uses the Fortress of Meripede for both quests. Well, this slows things down a little bit. And now it is the three hour mark. I have spent the last probably almost an hour doing this stupid unfinished comedy quest. It remains unfinished and I want it to be finished. It is unfinished and it is not a comedy. It is very painful because I just want to continue the main story quest. Yes, we are li we, we leave the Fortress of Meripede. Sick. Bye. Oh wait, we still- Come on. How are we still not done with this? We're not even at the fort. We're outside the Fortress of Meripede. We're not even in there anymore. Why do we still have to do this quest? Up. Oh, this is why we the, we can't continue the main story quest. Because we're back. Now we're out of there. Can we continue? Yes, we can continue with the main story quest. And of course, we have to go all the way over here again. Great. And we're done. Thank you for your cooperation. Next, someone will be along to guide you inside the fortress. Please be sure to cherish this opportunity for rebirth. She sounds like she really likes her job. Honestly, though, if I was at that job, same. I'd agree. This is what I mean with this quest. It is so repetitive. This is what our third or fourth, third day, I think, of just waking up, doing the job, investigating, going back to sleep. It gets way too repetitive. Oh, and just like that, we're at the four hour mark. So about halfway through my time limit. And we are, I'd say, about halfway, if not a little bit over halfway through the quest, I think. We're about halfway through the third act. So I think we're about halfway or maybe a little bit more than halfway through the third act. And then we've just got two more, I think, after this. So fingers crossed we should be able to do that in four hours. Well, there's Act 3 completed. I didn't think it was going to be halfway through this quest, but it is. I thought the Fortress of Meripede quest was like the whole Act 3, but apparently not. Which now makes me think that Act 5, the Masquerade of Guilty one, the last one, is going to be really long. Yeah, this quest that we're doing now is about the same length as the last one, Act 3, which was, I'm going to say, about... Uh, an hour and a half-ish, like just spamming through dialogue. This one's, I think, a tiny bit longer, but it's about the same. And then the next one, which is Act 5, is uh, double the length. So, you know, that's uh, about three hours. Which means if that is the case, we should finish this just under the time limit, I think. And like that, we've hit the five-hour mark as we reach very crazy part of quest because primordial sea coming and it is you know alarms going off and sick cutscenes what are you going to do against literal water that could kill you if it touches you risley is about the only person who can do something there because he can just you know punch it and freeze it Cloran's doing nothing she can't use her sword against water so now we go pull the classic fight fire with fire except in this case we're fighting death water with water god or technically dragon god thing but same thing sure you don't need a hand quite sure wow so what's your secret huh uh, let me guess nah who knows maybe it's just your sense of responsibility <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right honestly those two are one of my favorite duos in the game Clorand and Risley. Especially this cutscene, because they're like half teased Nouvellet when they're leaving. It's just funny. And then Nouvellet proceeds to go and do this awesome stuff and just looks sick. Okay, Act 4 is completed. Which means with that, we are now on to the longest quest out of the bunch, Act 5, which I'm pretty sure without skipping through dialogue or, you know, spamming through dialogue, is about a four and a half, four hour 20 quest which is quite a long time. 
So hopefully we can do, get it done in about two hours. But we shall see. Masquerade of the Guilty has started. Let's get into this. And this quest, the Masquerade of the Guilty, is definitely my favourite of the Fontaine Archon quests. And I'd say it's pretty well up there for everyone's favourite of the Fontaine Archon quests. You only needed to be on social media for like 10 minutes after it released and the amount of edits and stuff were insane. Honestly, still now I'm getting a ton of Fontaine edits. But that's fair. It is a very good quest. Oh no, I just realized what part of this quest it is. I think from memory, it gets kind of depressing toward the end of it. Actually, to be fair, this quest in general, this entire fifth act, is kind of depressing. Just the entire thing. Okay, so I stopped recording there because it was late. And I had a problem with the timer because it didn't start doing its thing anymore. It stopped counting up, so... I've done the opposite and now it is counting down because when I stopped it I memorized the time and then when I started the timer up today it didn't go to that time so we are now counting down the time because I'm not waiting five hours for that time to get back to what it was but I think two hours 40 should be enough to complete this quest fingers crossed and I think what I've decided to do is I will get around to doing bedtime story and Atlan's quest at another point but for the time being I'm just going to go to Natland so I can complete that event without having to stress about quests. And then I will get to doing those other two probably when we pull up a ride. And because I imagine that 500 Primo thing will still be around. Yeah, this has still got 30 days left. So we can still do that easily. But this event I will just go and do. I won't worry about having to do all the Archon quests before I get to there. I'm just going to go and explore like unlock all the waypoints and do that event. Probably not in a video because it's not super interesting. But yeah, I'm just going to go finish that off so I can get all the primos from it. And I'll probably do a similar thing on Fontaine only because I have probably about 20 hours worth of quests to do there. Because I still have Sumeru and Fontaine. Plus Bedtime Story, plus Natland. I'll get around to doing that, but yeah, I'm probably just going to do that event without doing the quests. Now we are on to the good bit of this quest because this is where all of the crazy good story comes in. This was the part of the quest that I'm pretty sure changed how everyone saw Farina. Because, like, originally, like, especially the very first quest, I was like, ah, she's kind of, you know, bratty personality, you know, she's, I don't, I'm not a super big fan of her. But then this part of the quest came in, and everyone's like, damn, I feel bad for Farina now. And then everyone loves Farina now. And that checks out. Farina is definitely one of my favorite characters now. That might also be because she's insanely strong, and... It never leaves my teams because she does big damage and does massive buffing. Now it's time for depression. And as normal, a good cutscene. God, there is a reason no other quest has topped that one. That that, that is isn't they they've nailed it with that quest. Probably a tad long, but it's the storyline of it is perfect. Can I please use it can I please use a different team for this? I'm gonna leave domain, because I I can't leave the domain. Can I? Please leave the domain. Um, my team is literally all hydro. And there's no damage. Let me fix that really quick. There we go. That should do. We just need Nahida and Cookie. And now we're sweet. Paimon. We have a god on our... Actually, we have two gods kind of on our team. We'll be fine. There is a black hole thing over there. I Is it bad that I've never realized that? Because I have never realized the big black hole thing over there. Feels like something I should have probably realized. Oh, yeah. Skirk. Skirk? I think it's Skirk. And bye, child. Yeet. She gives me, like, uh, Honkai Impact vibes. Or, like, Honkai Star Rail. She looks like someone from there, not Genshin. You best believe when she comes out, because hopefully she comes out at some point, I am pulling for her. Because she looks like, you know, Honkai Star Rail, Honkai Impact character. And no one else looks like her in the game. So she looks cool. Very different. Now we get another cool cutscene. Oh, yeah, no, Natlan has some work if it wants to beat this quest. 
Genshin know how to make good quests. Oh my god. This is why I can't wait for the Genshin anime, which has been like three years or something now since they... What? Three? Two? Two years? Three years? Something like that? Since they said they were going to release it? Like, come on. With those types of cutscenes and stuff, the Genshin anime is going to be insane. But we still have zero zilch nudger absolutely no news about the anime hello game what um what what have i done okay there we go that was odd oh wait no great my game died what is the internet gone yep the internet dropped out sick that's fun Okay, we're back. We have to do the spirit of the quest again. The internet is back. Uh, whether it stays back, that's another question. I'm hoping it will. We'll just see. But now we have to spam through this bit of dialogue again. Now we just have the classic end of quest thing where we've just got to go around and talk to everyone as they like to do towards the end of the quest. But I think looking at our timer here, we have an hour 12 left before that eight hour mark which is my time limit for this and i think we should easily be able to finish the fontaine arkham quest within the next 12 minutes i'm pretty sure but if we can then i will probably consider doing the bedtime story because it's only about a two hour no it's it's only about like an hour 40 total time quest so we should be able to do that like easily within the time limit and then the only thing left then is natland which i will as i said do when we pull for raiden Ah uh, yes, and to clarify a couple things, because I have did see some people saying this in my last video. Kachina, not a support. She is more of a sub DPS for me. And Dia also sits in that role of sub DPS for me as well. Because they both have sort of DPS-ish kits. Dia's is not very good DPS, it's pretty garbage. But it's still more DPS focused, with both have tiny little supportive bits. But for me, they are both sub DPSs. And yeah, just like that, Masquerade of the Guilty and the entirety of the Fontaine Arkham Quest is done. Thank God. Which means we are now on to Bedtime Story. And we get Forced Experience Mode. Thank you. Please do that because I don't want to have to deal with any other quests. We only have about an hour and basically an hour exactly left. So let's jump into this now and do Bedtime Story. So then we are basically almost up to date and we just have to do natland then this one's not too long of a quest i'm pretty sure it does finally get us some interaction between the two siblings but the length of the quest isn't too bad so this should be pretty easy hopefully and just like that we now have one hour left so fingers crossed we should be able to do this i'm pretty sure we should be able to but that being said though it could take longer and we could still have to get right in, so that might involve spending or farming our whole time Oh yeah, I forgot Dainslif actually existed in this quest. Actually, it seems all of these like in-between quests, like in-between the main Archon quest, they're all Dainslif quests. And these ones tend to always have the most interaction between the siblings. They get little bits of information in the main Archon quests, and then everything comes from these ones. Which I mean is fair, I'm pretty sure Dainslif was the travel companion for our sibling, I think. Now we get more kind of sad cutscenes. And we also get, finally, some interaction between the two travellers, after like four years. And that entire interaction, completely pointless because we don't remember anything. I want an actual proper interaction with the siblings where we remember things. Preferably in a physical world. But that will most likely only happen right at the end of the story. Yeah, well it seems like we shouldn't have a problem with completing this in an hour or the right you know within the time limit which is sweet we should finish by the looks of things about half an hour early indeed we will bedtime story is done at basically bang on half an hour which means next bit of story is natlan which i will get around to doing but not right now because too long i don't want to get stuck into that plus we only have 29 minutes left of my timer, and that's not enough to get through even the first part of Natlan. So I will leave that to another video. I am going to go and explore this anyway, so I can do this event. But that's the only bit of Natlan I'm really going to deal with. There will be that one little quest we have to do right at the start when we get the Sur Saurian thing. That is eight hours-ish, about eight hours, of quests done. 
that was, it was something. I mean, we've got the entirety of the Fontaine Archon quest done, which took a minute, but it's done. That's definitely my favorite Archon quest. And Bedtime Story is also completed. And in doing that, we have now given ourselves a bunch of free pools. I think this should give us about six pools. Five and Bedtime Story, six. Boom. That is now everything except Natland done with the quest. So we are pretty well caught up with things now, which is good because... I've been meaning to do this for quite a while. It's actually catch up with the amount of quests I've got to do. So it's good that we've all caught up now and we're not like five quests behind like Fontaine only, which is suffering right now because they are a lot of quests behind. We I still have to do the whole Sumeru Arkham quest and that one is a pain. But I'm going to do the same thing on that account. I'll do the event just without doing the Arkham quest and then I will go and do the quests and stuff later. I will get around to doing that sooner rather than later because I still need to get the 500 primos. So with all that questing, it did give us a couple more pools, which is nice. I didn't expect us to give us too many more, but it gave us a couple more. Gives us five intertwined fates, which means we are now sitting at a very nice 33 pool saved up for Raiden. So we should have enough to get a five star. Whether we win the 50-50 or not, that's a different story. With that being said, I think that's a good spot to leave it off. We have done about eight hours of quests and that is quite taxing on my brain because yeah, not fun. But it is done and now I don't need to do it again because I will probably just work through the quests a little bit sooner so that I can actually not have to do that again. I don't have to do eight plus hours of quests anymore. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. If you like sort of content, do consider subscribing. And uh yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And good. Bye.